I have always wanted to produce an event like a Lilith Fair mm -hmm. with consciousness. Jan Phillips' emails have been such an inspiring light to me, and it's been really wonderful to see that manifested in a weekend workshop. Do the right thing, be public, be outspoken. What's called for at this time of planetary crisis is an entirely new lexicon. I think the difference between information and inspiration is the heart element. And you know what I need? I need brave and courageous children because that's what actors are. When you tell people things, it stays up here, it remains information, but when you add music, when you add images, when you add sound and beauty, then it just drifts down into the heart. And this is where the power center is. I needed to take hold of the torch to use my life, this small, precious moment I have on this planet, to transform myself and this world with my voice. What's happening for everybody is that their heart is opening and we're realizing how much we have missed in our lives of having this phenomenal connection with other women. So that's what I wanted to create was a symposium where women could claim and be proud of their creativity. So how can we begin to heal our relationships and radically love our bodies? And then apply it toward the making of a culture that we can be proud of. Rites of Passage began as a wild vision I had of basically a living museum of women's lives. What infuses me when I come to Women's Voices, Women's Visions, like right now I'm watching Sandra lead her Tai Chi practice with the fans and it's a group of about 12, 15 women moving out in the grass and I know that most of those women have probably never done anything like that before. If you could equalize say decibel levels, mass, male voices here, mm -hmm. female voices right here. So what we're trying to do is equalize the sound of the female and the masculine, right? The feminine and the masculine. So our job in order to bring balance to the world is to balance out the powers of expression, who has power in the matter of speaking, in the matter of everything. Mm -hmm. We want to equalize the power. In the spirit of an injury to one is an injury to all, we organize through peace building circles and what would become known as restorative practices. Part of the value of a women's gathering like this is there's probably 15 women here who didn't know we were out of balance. Right. You know, who don't know exactly why does it happen that I don't feel good about myself. Right. But when women come together and tell their stories, that's the genesis of consciousness raising. If the first was strong enough to turn this world upside down all alone. Here, what are we here to turn it back <laughs> and get it right side up again? I'm also have a big commitment to have as many women of color in the front of the room as possible, because why the second wave of feminism dissipated? was because nobody knew how to deal with or talk about race and class. Women of color felt disassociated right. from the white women's movement. And we have, I feel I have personally so much to learn from women of color, and I think we all do. She keeps showing me new ways to be me, lessons I forgot. She wears red and says she is staking a claim to beautiful, drops people like bad habits, cutting hurt from her body, carving a new switch to her step. More bounce to the out, she says, more cushion for the pushing. She is a vulgar girl. Doris Lessing used to say, I didn't have an idea, there was an idea around. And I think the idea for this has been around in all of our right. hopes and all of our, oh, I wish, I wish, I wish. You know, we do open our voices and we do have wisdom and we do have insight, but mostly we see all the love and our hearts are really longing for that. 
we all just wound together and it was very beautiful. When was the last time you really felt listened to? I'm so taken with the love and affection that we're all surrounded with. You can be anybody that you want to.